joining us on Biology Weekly. Today we'll be talking about genes, natural selection, and evolution. Have you ever wondered why peacock got its beautiful colors? Peahen or female peacock has its own beautiful colors too. White peacocks are white and that's their color. And other birds have their own colors and characteristics too. Mammals have their own traits and fishes have their own characteristics. This way all living things in this world have their own traits and characteristics. How did they come about? Well, interesting question here. Uh, look at these red arrows and these red arrows are pointing towards the males of, this, uh, of all the species that are shown here. Males and females of the same species look different from each other, don't they? Have you ever wondered why? In another day, in another video, we'll explain about that. But today, let's go back to our peacock here and let's focus on a cell in this peacock. We all know that cells are the basic building blocks of life. And within the cell, we have other components too, like the nucleus. <clears throat> in a nucleus, one can find what is known as chromosome. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Apple has 17 pairs of chromosomes. Our peacock here has 38 pairs of chromosomes. Within the chromosomes, one can find DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. And in the DNA is where we find our genes. So <clears throat> genes are what gives us different characteristics and traits. So when a peacock has beautiful colors, we know that they come from what is known as gene expression. And when a female peacock and a male peacock mate with each other, then they pass on their genes to their offspring. Despite coming from the same parents, have you ever wondered why different siblings um, look different from each other? This is the same answer to why despite coming from the same ancestors, all of us look different from each other, and why coming from the same common universal ancestor, all living things dif look different from each other. This is because there is genetic variation in the population. Variation, genetic variation occurs because of, mostly because of two things, genetic recombination and mutation. While there are different copies of the genes, they get shuffled while passing on, and therefore different offsprings get different copies of the genes, and that is known as genetic recombination. A good analogy for this is on a crowded night before the final exams at a Xerox photocopy shop, the stressed photocopy store person would be having to make different or many copies of the same notes and he'd be making copies of notes from students from different subjects, right? So when you go home, among your notes, you might find a random copy from some other subject that you don't even know about. And this kind of random things happen in the G2 all the time. And mutation is another thing that causes variation. So changes that can happen in the genes is known as mutation. So an atom of oxygen can be replaced by a hydrogen atom, and this can cause variation in the gene. And this happens uh, many times and randomly, and it happens during inheritance, during the development of a child, and in our bodies right now as I talk. So through genetic recombination and mutation, we have variation in the population. And when a peacock and peahen mate, Therefore, their offsprings all will look different from each other. And when a group of peacocks and peahens mate during a mating season, when we see all their offspring, we see that they all look different from each other. And this is known as variation in the population. And natural selection acts on this variation in the population. The theory of natural, um, the theory of evolution by natural selection was explained by Charles Darwin. A good uh, example that I'm gonna use here is a very classic textbook example of these peppered moths that come in two colors, white and black, and they are a prey for predators like bats. Uh, and these moths uh, are found on trees and the bats or predators would go to the trees and then eat these moths. In 1800 London, because of industrial revolution, there was a lot of soot and smog in the air and therefore the whole atmosphere was with thick, dense black soot. So the tree barks were also covered with this black soot. And because of this black suit, the black moths got camouflaged or hidden on this tree bark, whereas the white ones were very visible for the bats to see them. So this way, more white moths got eaten, and therefore one could find more black moths in the population and less white moths in the population. This is one example of natural selection. Other examples are when back in those days, people used to breed for different varieties of pigeons, some with pretty feathers, some with some pretty decorations on their feathers, some fat ones, some ones with different kind of feet. In fact, this kind of breeding was an inspiration for Darwin to actually think and come about with his idea of natural selection. And another example of natural selection is in some communities, um, 
they realized that the cattle or lambs with long legs were able to jump through the fences. And that's why they selected for lambs with shorter feet and lambs with shorter feet got selected for over time. And agriculture is another example of how humans, uh, through artificial selection, uh, brought about different species. So let's say there was a wild mustard plant in some part of the earth and the humans there selected for the plants that gave clustered leaves and they kept selecting them for over generations and this gave rise to what we call cabbage. In another location maybe the humans selected for underdeveloped tasty flowers and this got selected for as what we see now as cauliflower. In another location maybe the humans kept selecting for juicy roots and that is what we now call radish. Uh, <clears throat> Charles Darwin went through various uh, voyages across the globe and one of um, his cool trips was to Galapagos Island and in that island he found out various uh, cool stuff and one of the cool things he observed there was the species that's shown here, of birds shown here, that is called the Darwin's finches and a key aspect of evolutionary biology is what is known as adaptation and we can use this Darwin finches to explain that. So um, as you can see here, I've shown you four different kinds of Darwin finches. So one of them has broad beak and therefore it can uh, eat seeds. And one of them has sharp beak and it can therefore navigate through cactus-like plants and eat the thorns, or uh, navigate through the thorns in the cactus plant and eat the cactus plant. And there are some <clears throat> Darwin finches that could eat buds from plants. And there are some uh, Darwin finches like the woodpecker kind of Darwin finch that could peck on the tree barks and get the worms from there and eat them. So this way, the beaks of these different Darwin finches are adapted in a way that they can eat different kinds of food. Likewise, from the food point of view or these plants point of view, say cactus, they also develop certain aspects like the thorns in this cactus plant is an adaptation for it to survive because the thorns are prickly, only certain species like one of these Darwin finches, for example, can navigate through those thorns and eat this plant. Not all animals can eat this plant. So therefore, this thorn is a good adaptation for the cactus plant for it to survive. So this way, adaptation helps the survival of species and all species, all of us are adapting ourselves to the environment constantly for survival. In all the examples that I show here, there are different agents or uh, drivers of evolution. So, um, <clears throat> and in all these examples, it's different species that are the drivers of evolution. In one case, it was the bat in the case of the peppered moths. In another case, it was humans that selected for different kinds of lambs or cabbages and cauliflower. And as seen in the Darwin finches example, we see that in terms of what kind of food they have in their surroundings, uh, the beak is an adaptation for the Darwin's finches, so the drivers of evolution there is the plant species. But on the other way round, the plant species survival is dependent on the finches. So the finches are an agent of evolution for the plant species and other species in their environment. So we see that many species are constantly in conflict and development and conflict and development work in hand in hand and they're always happening and this way evolution is always happening. So I hope this video helped you clarify some basics of uh, genetics and evolution. And thank you for watching our video. Hope you liked it. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions or feedback, please put them down in the comments below. Thank you very much.